Well, I just love our next guest. Al Roker is a busy man. He travels the globe for stories. He also co-hosts and does the weather on the Today Show, as you know. He's a best-selling author. Oh, and did you know that he develops programming for television networks as CEO of Al Roker Entertainment? So where in the world does he go to get things done? Chances are it's anywhere but the office, because if anybody's office is anywhere, it's Al's. He's sharing some great advice with us this morning. Always good to see him. Hey, Al, good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Danielle. How are you? Well, can I just tell you that, you know, you're talking about something that women have known for years. So welcome to the club, how to get things done anytime, anywhere. But you are giving us a run for our money, my friend, with your travel schedule. Well, look, uh, uh, women are the original multitaskers. And, and I think yeah. as women have uh, moved into the workforce uh, alongside men, I think we're, we're all struggling with how do we balance our life uh, our families, our, our social life, and, and, our, and our, our jobs. And I think technology, for once, is actually helping. You can be more productive where you need to be, when, no matter where you are, whenever you need to be, uh, thanks to uh, the Internet, thanks to cloud-based services. You know, it's so funny. I have to say, I've run into you a few times on stories over the years. I saw you at the Olympic Games. We chatted for a bit there, a few times on South Beach for the Food and Wine Festival. And then I'll see you the very next day on TV from someplace else, someplace really, really far away. And I remember thinking, this man is everywhere. You must live in airports. And so technology must really be important oh, to you. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's and I think it's becoming more and more important to, to, to just about everybody because uh, every, a lot of people can use this. I think 90% of the people said it made their life, their balance of work and life better. Uh, so I think, you know, anytime you can use something like that, I think it's, it's terrific. I do want to ask you, of everything, you know, that you've done over the years, what would you say has been your favorite assignment or your favorite interview? Ooh, wow. Um, I, well, two that stick out to me. I got to uh, interview Rosa Parks, uh, which enough said i mean that's the the epitome of one person making a difference i mean uh, uh, just amazing and i'm an amateur I'm, a, I'm an amateur cartoonist and i got to interview charles schultz uh twice once for the 50th anniversary with peanuts and then uh, again two weeks before he passed uh, he asked me to come out and do one last interview and uh, so those were probably the two most uh, influential um uh, interviews uh, to me uh, but I, you know, it's uh, I, I, I've got a terrific job. I mean, it's an, I, 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 some, I pinch myself. I still do. Al, always good to talk to you, and I'll see you on the road, I guess. All right, Danielle, thank you. And for more information on all things Al, you can visit his website. It's alrokerentertainment.com. Okay, are you trying to lose weight and you're just tired of reading another six minute abs book? Yeah, right. Or drop 14 pounds in 30 days book? Yeah, I know the feeling. My next guest has written a book that tackles some common fitness misconceptions. Mike Weidenbach is the author of 101 Fitness Myths. It's a bodybuilding library that's easy lifting. Good morning. So, good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, no, I'm so glad you're here because I, you know, I got to tell you, I really enjoyed the book. But before we start talking about sure, the book, sure. I, I want to talk about you. I love knowing that you're a two-time World Cup and Olympic level swimmer in Germany. Yeah, that's true. That's actually how I came to the States. Uh, I was I was a swimmer in Germany. I was uh, quite decent at uh, two World Cups, Olympic trials, and then got a scholarship here at uh, Fordham University, which I'm very grateful for. And that's how I ended up uh, being in the United States. 
My brother was a swimmer. What did you compete in? 1500 freestyle. Wow, you must yeah. have been really good. Not to mention you yeah. look great, but we'll talk Thank about you. the way he looks because he looks awesome. Now, you're also the founder of Adler Training. I've never heard of that. What is that? That's my personal training company. We provide 24-7 services. We do your workouts, your diets, your supplements, moral support if you need it. Okay. You are our client all around the clock. So it's kind of like one-on-one. -on -one. It's only one-on-one. -on -one. So obviously you've taken your experiences that right. you've had throughout your life. Yes. And you put it into this book. Mike, what makes this book different from all the others that we see in the bookstore? Basically, the premise of the book is anyone can be in shape. And what I didn't want to write was another book where, you know, this is your routine, do that, look great. It's a book where basically it sums up all the things people do wrong okay. that I've seen in some 20 years in the gym and that's holding them back and gives them the tools to correct themselves and form their own routine. And I got to tell you, I learned a couple things. Like sometimes, you know, I'll see my friends and, you know, they have certain physiques. Sure. And I've used this excuse. I've said, well, you know, I, I just don't have the genetics to look like that. Right. Is that just an excuse? Because you, I'm quoting you. Yeah, it is and it isn't. I think it's success in the gym depends on information more than on genetics. You go from fat to fat, from, from diet to diet, from trend to trend, the hot yoga and table and whatnot. And then you still don't look like Heidi Klum after she had her first child. And you say, okay, fine. <laughs> I don't have it. I do not have genetics, and you give up. But, or Madonna. Yeah, or Madonna. But <laughs> the truth is, yes, you're not Heidi Klum, but you also not, you shouldn't be doing her routine. You need to build your own. And yes, anyone can be in great shape. That's true. Here's something that I learned from your book. I'm a runner. I, I love do. running marathons. But you say in your book, cardio is not the answer. Weights are important. Now I feel like I'm flabbing all over the place. Well, not quite. Most of us go to the gym to look better, not to run faster. So cardio doesn't give you the chance to really model the body the way you want it. Like, you know, let, let's say you have broad hips, okay? Weight would give you the chance to put a little bit more on the shoulders so your hips would look more narrow, for mm -hmm. instance. And so you have a chance to, like, take some away from the thighs, whereas cardio can only make you smaller, but it won't change your physique overall. Okay, good point. Now, I just, I want to know, if, Howard, if you could just zoom in here, please. My photographer's mm -hmm. going to zoom in. I just want to know how my husband, and, and me for that matter, how... Do I look like that? I mean, hunka wonka, you've got <laughs> incredible abs. Oh, thank you. How do you do that? Not by crunches. The best exercise for abs is actually the squat. Nothing works your abs harder because if you squat down and you don't hold your abs hard, you will fall forward. Ah! Then there's the deadlift that needs to be done, which also works your butt and your abs extremely well. Standing military presses, great for the shoulders, arms, and abs pull-ups or pull-downs, and bend over rows. Those are the five things you must do when you go to the gym. It's all in there. Plus the cardio. The cardio always at the end. If you have extra time, super, oh, throw it in. Always it. at the end, not yes. before. Yeah. Because I actually like getting my endorphins going and then maybe doing weights, but you're saying the other way around. You can do a quick warm-up, five minutes or so, but the, if you're planning on doing a big chunk of cardio, do it afterwards. All right. Always afterwards. You got great abs. Thank you. Have you ever shown them on TV before? Yeah. Wouldn't be the first time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Good luck to you. And if you'd like more information on the book, it's a great book, actually. It really is. It's an easy read, too. It's called 101 Fitness, Fitness Myths. Go to AdlerTraining.com. You see, I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I asked him to take his shirt off, but I'm not going to have you do that. Balancing your act is a full-time job. It helps to have a support group. Join our social community by visiting Twitter.com slash BalancingActTV. Get in on the conversation. We hope you enjoyed the show today. Tomorrow, we all know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but did you also know it can keep you slim? I mean, really slim. We're going to show you a tasty way to jumpstart your day. And if you suffer with uneven skin tone or dark spots, we're going to show you a product that really helps. Be sure to follow us after the show on Facebook at Balancing Act Fans and on Twitter at Balancing Act TV. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.